Tom Cruise has had a legendary acting career that spanned several decades. And throughout this time, he's been involved with some of the most beautiful women ever. Penelope Cruz, Sofia Vergara, possibly Shakira. But here's the thing about beautiful women. They're not fish. And sometimes, you got an itch that only a fish can scratch. So for today's video, let's take a look at some reports of Tom Cruise doing strange things with fish. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. You ever go to watch a movie or stream a song and you notice, hey, it's not available to stream in my area, but it is available somewhere else. For example, recently I wanted to watch Goodfellas, but it's actually not streaming in the US. You know where it is streaming? Germany. So I just go to NordVPN, go to Germany, and there we go, Das Goodfellas. NordVPN has thousands of servers worldwide, and you can temporarily globetrot on all your devices, up to six at one time. Right now, you can get an exclusive deal and four additional months for free when you use my link nordvpn.com slash wang. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash wang or just click the link in the description below. Tom Cruise is a guy whose proclivities have always been the subject of rumors and gossip. Famously, there's always been a rumor that Tom Cruise is secretly gay. Wow, that cameraman has nice strong arms. You can't catch me, gay thoughts! This rumor has been so persistent that he even won a $10 million lawsuit in 2003 over it. And it's for that reason that I must reiterate that everything that I talk about in this video is completely unverified. And frankly, if these stories are true, there's probably a good reason why it's just not what it looks like. So recently, I got a message from my friend Linz, who hosts the Dystopian Simulation Radio podcast, asking me to cover the rumors about Tom Cruise fucking fish. And I'm like... The what now? Like, we've all heard about Richard Gere putting gerbils up his ass, but this is a new one to me. I've heard a lot of weird stuff about Tom Cruise, I've seen Tom Cruise do a lot of weird stuff, but I've never heard anything about the fish. An initial search brings me to the last podcast on the left, and it seems like the Tom Cruise fish lover rumor has been a bit of an inside joke for them for a few years. As far as I can tell, the rumor becomes a part of that community through the Page 7 podcast, which is a celebrity gossip podcast on their network. At the end of episode 381, Ebenezer Stooge, they read a blind item regarding an unspecified celebrity. So a blind item, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I know I'm a bit of out of my realm over here, and I'm encroaching on the territory of women and the gays, but a blind item is generally some kind of scandalous news story involving a celebrity who's not identified, but you can figure out who they are through context clues. Some outlets for this are known for vetting their sources very well, some are known to not vet them at all. But in any case, it seems like a good way to talk shit without getting sued. The blind item they write in this episode appears to be from a blog called Crazy Days and Nights. Crazy Days and Nights is a blog that's been around since 2006. It's been run for nearly two decades by an anonymous Hollywood entertainment lawyer known as Entertainment Lawyer, or Enti for short. And on December 3rd of 2020, Enti posts the beginning of the Tom Cruise fish lover story arc. The craziest tip I've received in a couple months. I thought I would share. I made it blind. I'm originally from California, but I've been in a language immersion program in blank for the past 18 months. And note that the blank is sometimes identified as Italy in reposts. Yesterday, I was doing my weekly shopping when I saw this A-plus list, mostly movie actor, over at the fish counter. He was wearing his mask, actually two one on top of the other, but I knew it was him because he had security with him and because I heard he was filming in the city. So he purchased a whole sea bass, but requested that they not wrap it up for him. He then took the fish into the men's room, was there for about 10 minutes, and when he came out, he no longer had the fish. I don't know what he was doing with it, but it's really fucking weird. I mean, clearly, he just unequipped the fish and put it in his inventory, right? I can almost imagine some kind of Larry David-esque scenario going on here. Like he took his sea bass into the bathroom and dropped it by accident, and then who's gonna want to eat a sea bass that you dropped on the dirty bathroom floor? So you have no option other than to toss it. R.I.P. sea bass. Then he comes out and someone sees him and he's like, whoa, no, it's not what it looks like. Now, of course, Tom Cruise is identified pretty quickly in the comments. At the time, he was filming Mission Impossible 7 in Rome, and he was spot all over the city wearing two masks. That has to be Tom Cruise purchasing his next wife. And now, I'm not a fish expert, so I wanted to look up a sea bass and see exactly how it looks so I know what's going on here. And I mean, look at it. It's kind of asking for it. Oh. Two days later, he would get another tip about this man who's been living out guar songs in real life. 
Earlier this week, I posted about the craziest tip I received in quite some time. Here's a continuation of that tip. The only edits are for blindness and a note on 2016. I believe I know who the fish bathroom guy is. I think it's this a list mostly movie actor because I witnessed him doing something similar in 2016. The actor was actually briefly in town in 2016. In a supermarket in LA, he had been wearing sunglasses, but it was definitely him based on the nose and the bodyguard next to him. I mean, being LA, I guess it could have been any celeb, but it was really the nose that gave him away. Tom Cruise, of course, has been accused of having nose jobs several times. So here's how his nose would have looked in 2016. Would you recognize that nose? I actually think I might. Although now because of the nose comment, you got some people thinking it might be Adrian Brody or Owen Wilson. I took a number from the red number thing and waited to be helped. Our actor was taking a while though, because he was carefully examining every fish that the guy placed on the scale. Finally, he settled on one. Not sure what kind it was, though. The actor requested the man not wrap it up, so that's actually the only reason why I followed him. I thought maybe they were filming a movie or something, and they had an emergency need for a new prop. He went into the men's room with the fish, and the bodyguard, but I stayed outside, afraid of appearing to be yet another star-struck civilian following a celeb somewhere. Although, when they opened the door to the restroom, I could see that there was not a film crew inside. I waited around like five minutes pretending to be shopping and was about to leave. I was thinking I might get in trouble for loitering outside the bathroom or something when they suddenly came back out of the bathroom with no fish. I was really curious, so I went in and found the fish in the garbage, wrapped in a massive amount of paper towels. Then I left. Honestly, I don't know what it is about this blind item versus the other one, but this one seems significantly faker to me. Just something about how it's written gives me that same vibe as the I saw flying lotus at a grocery store copy pasta. You know, maybe he needed that fish there to prevent electrical inveterance. The need for him to pick out just the right fish, though, is an interesting new detail. As Proximus Centaurus points out, it is important. You gotta make sure it's a female. You don't want a male fish, because that would be wrong. You know, I mean, diddling a fish is one thing, but being gay with a fish, yeah. And it's legally proven that Tom Cruise isn't gay. There's also an argument about the logistics of getting an unwrapped fish at a grocery store. I'm sure some of you are thinking about that right now. Sure, you just hook a couple fingers through the fish's mouth and gills and carry it through the store, dripping fish slime all over the floor, as well as on your nice Italian loafers and your fancy slacks. Then you get back to the register and you hold it up on the moving belt, creating a slimy mess that the cashier has to clean up. I called BS on this whole blind. Another poster, Annie U. Rism, while noting that she doesn't believe most of the gossip on this site, says that from her experiences working at Winn-Dixie, a person absolutely could do this if they wanted. Another commenter, Queen Francine, made a suggestion that I hadn't thought about. What if this was a drug dump of some sort? Titchin Lily Gomez responds, That is what I'm thinking. The fishmonger puts drugs down the gullet of the fish, they have to make it legit by weighing the fish, etc. Surely there's a better way to do this, though. Especially for someone like Tom Cruise. I mean, to think about it some more, why wouldn't Tom Cruise just send someone else to pick up his jerk-off fish? Unless it's like the specific thrill of doing it in the supermarket and possibly getting caught. Later that week, a third tip arrives. This time it's from Beijing. This tipster didn't identify if it was our actor or not. So this could just be some random person who has a fish fetish. Dear Ent Lawyer, I am reading your website for two years. Excuse my English, please, as I am not native speaker. I am living in USA, California for five years now, but am from Beijing. Your blind item made me remind me of what I saw in my Beijing supermarket, BHG, many years ago. I worked at Fresh Meat Counter of BHG Supermarket in Beijing, which was next to Fresh Seafood Counter. One day, maybe in 2013 or maybe 2014, I see man go to... This is clearly a person that's trying to sound Chinese. It's they're they're doing a fake Chinese accent in the writing. I could tell. He had two black clothes, man. But <laughs> come on. <laughs> I see a man go to seafood, f fresh fish counter, and order one fish. He had two black clothes, men by his sides, and had sunglasses over his eyes. He spent many minutes. <laughs> he spent many minutes. <laughs> Lord God, I expect more. Oh, this Tenchu dialogue. <laughs> oh, fuck. He spent many minutes looking at fish section, and he then ordered one complete fish called Pompano. And by the way, here's what a Pompano looks like. It's not as biting as the sea bass. I did not see what he say to fish counter staff worker. 
but I see him walking away from fish counter with fish not wrapped. But fish was raw, so I do not think he would eat it then. At closing, my superior says, there is Pompano in bathroom rubbish bin. I tell her what I see, and superior says she see the same type the day prior. Also, my peer who works later shift informed me that strange man returned to supermarket in the evening and purchased pig trotters. Pig feet. He put every package of pig feet in shopping cart and then becomes distressed when my friend says there are no more. Now, as I noticed while reading that, many of the commenters also noticed that this Chinese cadence sounds fake as fuck. Like in my in my script when I wrote this out, I said I put a line where I'm like, oh man, it was a struggle to read that without doing the accent, but clearly I couldn't even help myself. But Tom Cruise really was in Beijing in 2013. He was doing a promotional tour for the movie Oblivion. But of course, anyone could just look that up and place him in Beijing at that time. There's also someone I noticed in the comments who goes even further back in time. This sounds a lot like something my sister told me years ago, like back in the 80s. She insists it was Tom Cruise she saw. And to make the situation even stranger, he actually went into the women's bathroom with the fish. And this time, the fish was wrapped up, but when he disposed of it, it was unwrapped. On December 13th, they published yet another tale of the fish lover. And this one makes me think even more about the drug deal theory. Hey, I've been reading your site a lot lately, and my interest has been piqued by the blinds about a man and a fish. I have an interesting story for you. I've lived in Vancouver, BC since 1998. I'm a makeup artist, and I've worked on numerous television shows that have filmed here since 1999. You probably won't believe this since it's the classic friend of a friend of a friend story, but I figured I'd share it anyway. In the year 2000, I got to work in the makeup department for a show. My supervisor was a woman with whom I formed a close friendship. Even years after the show ended, we would text and Facebook message one another almost every day. So in early 2011, she sent me the most hilarious and bizarre text about something her cousin supposedly witnessed. Her cousin, who passed in 2015 in a car crash, was a celeb chaser. Before you ask, no, she did not literally chase them, and her hobby was not related to her accident, nor was she a paparazzi. She would, however, consult her friend who's ran a celebrity tracking Twitter account in the hopes she could spot them and possibly get autographs that she could sell. I've always withheld judgment because she worked two jobs and still struggled to make ends meet. She heard that this A-plus list mostly movie actor was filming at the Vancouver Convention Center. She lived really close by at the time, so she jumped in her car and was there in about five minutes. She was too late, though and only caught a glimpse of him as he departed the scene. But she saw which car he got into and followed it for blocks until his driver pulled into the lot of the IGA on Robson. Apparently, the actor waited in the car and the driver got out and went into the store. There was someone else who remained in the car with the actor, but she wasn't sure who it was. Probably a bodyguard. Apparently, the actor looked anxious in the car. He was like sort of bouncing up and down in his seat. The driver came back with only a white paper package in his hand which he started unwrapping before he even got the door open. It was some sort of whole fish. The actor rolled his window down just far enough to grab the fish, but she was unable to see what he did with it because the driver got in and quickly sped out of the parking lot. I thought my friend was totally bullshitting me, but the blinds I've been reading lately have really made me start to wonder if she was telling the truth. And the commenters seem to be thinking more along the same lines I am, that this is starting to sound more like a drug deal than a sex thing. But like, why would you need your drugs to be delivered stuffed inside of a fish? Like, I could see if this was one specific dealer's procedure, but why would you need it done this way everywhere around the world? Like, oh yeah, I'm going to China, you know what I want to put up my nose? Fish slime. You're to get some kind of brain parasite. Then the next day, they get yet another fish story. This was my first time ever as an extra, and I was actually told I was lucky because I got to get more glimpses of the actors than most extras do. I noticed this A-plus list mostly movie actor who seemed jumpy, sort of like he was on something. He was like, bouncing on the balls of his feet. He wears specially made shoes with really thick soles, by the way. I'm good at reading lips because I have partial hearing loss that's getting worse as I age. And as the shoot was ending, I was on the other side of the street from him. So I couldn't hear what he was saying, but I read his lips and he kept saying something about a fish. He said the word at least three times. Now this one to me, it almost feels like he's satirizing the other posts. Started to get a little goofy. I mean, more goofy than it already was. And some of the commenters are getting a little tired of the fish stories. Some of them think it's a troll or people trying to get attention. And others just don't care and they want regular celebrity gossip. But they start to get more and more of these fish posts and they get goofier and goofier. 
Like a guy in Boston who saw him get mad when a store only sold fillets and not whole fish. And then you got someone who wrote a haiku. Fishman is a plus list mostly movie actor. I know because I saw him do stuff with a trout. It was long ago on a long lost movie set in California. I'm not an actor. My mother was in the crew. She brought me along. He had trout brought in, whole and large with mouths open. He refused to share. Then he disappeared into the bathroom with one. He thought no one saw. I went in after and I found it in the trash can, stuffed at the bottom. It was in rough shape. One eyeball is popping out. The mouth leaked white stuff. I ran to my mom. She told me to shut my mouth. So I said no more. The final fish post comes on February 10th of 2021. I think I know the identity of fish lover. Back in, I think, 2015 or 2016, I worked in a pet store in Georgia. A friend of mine who worked the registers and would assist in the live animal department when needed came up to me one day in tears and said that this A-plus list, mostly movie actor, had just flipped out on her. He had come into the store about 10 minutes prior and had begun inquiring about fish. He wanted to purchase a Placostomus, which is a type of sucker mouth catfish that can grow to 24 inches long depending on species. And here's a Placostomus. What are we thinking, fellas? He said he wanted the biggest one we had. My friend showed him the common Plecos we had, which grow to be the largest. But none were more than about six inches long because we received them all as babies and they're always purchased by customers before they mature. He began demanding one that was at least 20 inches long, and my friend told him that we simply did not have any that size. She suggested he go to any of the small mom and pop fish stores around the city, as they usually have at least one massive pleco suffering in a way too small tank. At that point, our actor basically threw a tantrum, whining about how he needed the fish now, and as he stormed out, he shouted back at her that he would be considering a lawsuit. Needless to say, my friend was very upset. Now, this story, once again, it's more of the same, but where it gets really interesting is in the comments. The top one is posted by a user named Todd Gross. It's a YouTube video that's currently unavailable, but the replies are all like, wait a minute, is this where this is all coming from? So the video's not there anymore, but I looked at it on the archive, and it's a clip from The Simpsons. Season 7, Episode 19, A Fish Named Selma. There's a part of it where Homer talks about rumors of Troy McClure doing weird things with fish at the aquarium. Yeah, who'd have thought he turned out to be such a weirdo? What are you talking about? You know, his bizarre personal life. Those weird things they say he does down at the aquarium. Why, I heard... Oh, Homer, that's just an urban legend. People don't do that type of thing with fish. Troy McClure. I thought he disappeared after that scandal at the aquarium. It's very possible that whoever started submitting these stories got the idea from this joke on The Simpsons. Or, you know, maybe back in 1996, the writers of The Simpsons had heard this rumor. And that's basically all we know about the Tom Cruise fish rumors. Perhaps this is one of the secrets that Nicole Kimmon has refused to ever reveal about their marriage, but I'm not fully convinced that Tom Cruise fucks fish, but he is a weird guy, so who knows? But anyway, if you like this video, turn on notifications and check out my old video about the internet versus the Church of Scientology. I'm out.